What's up, YouTube? We're going to have a little discussion today. Today, I wanted to talk about whether or not there were too many new yo-yo companies and new yo-yos. Let's get into this a little bit. So the question really is twofold. One, is the yo-yo market oversaturated? I guess threefold. Two, are there too many yo-yo companies for this whole thing to be sustainable and free should anybody start a new yo-yo company so let's start with number one one is the market oversaturated with yo-yos yeah it kind of is but it seems to also be holding up okay like it's not changing dramatically and it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of risk involved necessarily in putting out a new yo-yo uh, depending on the size of the run now clearly like you know a brand new company like going I'm gonna do a run of 10,000 yo-yo that's probably a mistake probably especially if like you don't have some sort of like basis to prove that you're gonna be able to move 10,000 units but you know most guys do some pretty small runs of between 50 and 100 and, you know, most of the time they're really just looking to do a yo-yo that they want to do for them and say, okay, well, you know, if you guys like this too, let's all share the uh, experience and this yo-yo is for me, but if you guys like it too, because let's face it, we all like a lot of the same kind of yo-yos, you'll like it too. And that seems to work out pretty well for a lot of guys and that's kind of cool. It does kind of put a lot of different yo-yos into the market and it puts a lot of, I guess, probably strain on the retail stores particularly, trying to figure out, okay, what should I ha carry, what shouldn't I carry, what should I just ignore completely, and, you know, for the, a lot of those guys, you know, the retail stores particularly, they sort of want to make sure they have yo-yos in stock that they can sell, because that's how they make their money, is by stocking and selling yo-yos, but a lot of companies bypass especially the newer, smaller ones, bypass the retail stores just because they're not making enough of them and they don't want to knock up the price to have to have a retail price on it, so they just kind of sell them, not wholesale, but like factory direct, because they're the middleman, not the, there's not two middlemen, you know, or they're the direct salesman, so after they've designed the area. But anyway, you know, like I said, are there... You know, too many, I don't know if there's too many, but there certainly are a lot of them, and it's pretty hard to keep up with. Uh, now, for the general consumer, that's fine. I figure, like, you know, if, if you're just kind of a general consumer, you just buy what you like, you buy from the companies you want to buy from and collect from, and that's it. You know, you occasionally pick up somebody's boutique one here and there to round off your collection, maybe help out people that you've met, or like, you know, if you've met somebody personally and they're like, oh, I'm coming out with a yo-yo, I'm gonna start my own yo-yo company, you're like, oh, okay. That shape looks all right. I'll buy that. You know, you know, you kind of work in that way for the general consumer. But for somebody who's sort of trying to run a, re a channel like me, like a yo-yo review channel and stuff, that could be rather difficult uh, because sometimes either a you have to really like keep up with it and just keep an eye on Instagram and on the forums and on Facebook and all that stuff, uh, and at the same time. You know, you gotta kind of figure out what's gonna be popular, what people are gonna want to know about. So, you know, there's there's that as well. I feel like across the board we do a pretty okay job, but we could always do a better job. Uh, I do have some some boutique yo-yos uh, that just showed up over the weekend uh, at my house now that I'll probably be getting to to review this weekend. That are very cool, very different, very neat. Uh, I don't necessarily think there's too many. I just think that there's a very very broad range of options. So. Number two, I guess that number one kind of also encompassed number two as to whether or not there were too many new companies. I don't think there are too many new companies because like I said, for the most part, people are just trying to put something out there that they want, something out there that they're interested in. And it's really just a matter of, well, I want to make this yo-yo mostly for me, but if you guys like it too, I'll make 50 of them and you know, I'll sell the rest off make my investment back at least, maybe make a few bucks, and then 
next time I want to make a yo-yo, I've got this money from the sales of the first yo-yo. And those are relatively safe um, investments for the most part. Unless you're just going to kind of go way out there, make a crazy yo-yo, and it plays terribly, and you have a bunch of terrible yo-yos that you've sort of lost your investment on. Even then, it's really not too terribly expensive. Like, it, you know, you, you, you probably you could have done better and there's you know some a little bit of risk involved but overall if you make a decent yo-yo you're probably going to be able to move the products and as long as you don't make too many of them and at least get your investment back for the most part now you know i'd say the first yo-yo is probably going to be your riskiest yo-yo so if when you have your first yo-yo out there if you're really trying to go off the wall maybe don't expect to get your investment back so quickly however you know, if your first yo-yo is either relatively safe or a shape that people like that maybe just has, you know, your own spin on it or something like your own organic or your own sort of wide H competition shape or something like that. Just something that you dreamed up in your head that's sort of similar to other impressive things that are out there and other yo-yos that people like, but different enough that it warrants being made, at least in your imagination, because that's just what you want. Like, I, you want this yo-yo to play this way. I think there's relatively little risk in that, so it's not necessarily that there are too many yo-yo companies or that any of that's a bad idea, uh, because, you know, I love to see that stuff, and I, I enjoy that stuff, personally. Some of those are some of my newest favorite yo-yos, the guys that are just like, oh, I'm going to take this, I like this yo-yo, and I like this yo-yo, and, but I wanted them to do this a little bit different, so I tweaked it. And it's like, those come out and it's like, oh man, that's fun. Totally in the same vein as those other yo-yos that were really fun. And then you kind of tweaked it and made it different, and now I really like it. So, you'll see a lot of that, and uh, I really like that. That personally is some of my favorite stuff when somebody comes out with something like that that just sort of uh, reimagines what I would consider a, a classic or just something that's already very good, just sort of a reimagined version of something that's already good is pretty fun and pretty cool, and a lot of yo-yo companies fall that way, and for the most part, it's just those guys wanting to make yo-yos that are a little different than the yo-yos they already like, and that's cool, and I appreciate that, and I like to play those too, so I think that's neat. Uh, I think the real risk, like I said, involves kind of going really out there. If you really, really want to like make something totally different, especially if it's your first yo-yo, uh, it's your, uh, your, you, you got a long road up to climb. Not to say that it can't be done, or that it hasn't been done well, it totally has, but uh, that's really where the risk is involved, uh, because there is just so much out there, and if you put something out there that's different, really different things, somebody's not going to like it. Uh, and when somebody doesn't like something, they say, ugh, I just don't like this yo-yo. Other people listen to that. Yo-yo is a lot of word of mouth kind of thing, and you know, going going a little too crazy, particularly for your first yo-yo, uh, can be uh, a, a little bit risky. But other than that, I don't think there's too much risk. And I think variety is the spice of life. So the fact that there are more yo-yos than you know maybe necessarily ne as needed, uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I kind of think it's a good thing, and I think that it works out rather well for the rest of the community. Um, so lastly, uh, I mean, I guess the question that people ask, and a lot of people approach me and say, oh, do you think I should make a yo-yo, do you think I should start a yo-yo company, um, or any kind of company that tries to make money within the yo-yo community. If your goal to, is, in the yo-yo community is to make money, no, because there's just not that much money in yo-yo. That's not to say that nobody makes money, because there certainly are people that do, there are companies that make money. A lot of them, though, are either machine shops or sort of the originators, like the Yo-Yo Factory or Duncan, uh, or machine shops like OneDrop, uh, stuff like that. Now, there are people who make money, a little bit of money. There are people who at least break even. There are people who have Yo-Yo pay for itself. That is sort of the goal that I would say should be your first goal. Not to say you'll never make money in Yo-Yo, but what you ought to want to do is to have Yo-Yo pay for itself, at least. Uh, if you start a company, you know, the proceeds of your first yo-yo should pay you back and give you enough money to do the second yo-yo, the second run of yo-yos, or the second yo-yo that you want to do. And those proceeds should allow you to then further expand 
and either support a team, support some local contests, things like that, uh, as well as pay for your own travel contests and things like that. I feel like that's a very doable thing. A very that's a very attainable goal in yo-yo is to sort of have yo-yo pay for itself um, and have your team support you enough and give you enough exposure to be able to sell more yo-yos and in turn be able to support contests and travel to contests and things like that. I think that's very uh, doable. However, if you're going to quit your 9 to 5 uh, and just like, oh, I'm just going to make yo-yos for a living and do this run of my first yo-yo of 10,000, I'm just going to sell all these so I'm going to live my life. Uh, you know, depending on who you are, that, that probably won't work. Now, if you're, you know, somebody who's got a big name in the industry, like Jensen Kimmett, he can, he can do stuff like that. Because he is, you know, he's that guy. He's the guy we all respect, we all look up to. Uh, so him and, and Charles, the fact that uh, A Return Tops, A-RT, um, does as well as it does, and those guys are able to support themselves with it, for the most part, uh, really is cool and, and, and stuff. But... I would say that they are the exception. They're clearly the exception as far as how yo-yo playing is concerned. Jensen, clearly a former world champion, uh, one of the most inspirational players, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. Um, so, and same thing with Chuck, really, really good. They put out really good videos. They're just really good at what they do. Um, you know, they are the, the 1% of the yo-yo world as far as all that's concerned. Um, so... If you're not on that level, don't expect to have that level of, like, success selling yo-yos. However, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who have just done really well just based on the strength of their designs and word of mouth. And uh, SF comes to mind. Uh, you know, it's still a mystery as to who they are, but they do really well just based on the strength of their designs and how well their yo-yos play. And uh, I don't know, I have no idea what their financial situation is, but they a pretty big team and do a lot of really cool stuff and uh, you know so it's possible it's totally possible I would say though uh, for starting out if you're gonna start a new one realize that there is a lot of competition you have to have something that sets you apart from the competition and your first goal shouldn't be oh this is gonna be my job forever your goal really should just be I, I want you to pay for itself I want this company to be able to support itself uh, and once you attain that goal, you can sort of reassess and decide where you want to go from there. But I think that should be the first goal that uh, anybody who thinks about starting a new yo-yo company should look at. Because there is a lot of competition. So, in closing, I don't think there's too much. I don't think there's too many yo-yo companies or too many yo-yos out there. I think there's a great variety and I think there's a lot of competition. So, I think that jumping in and starting a new company is rather difficult and something that you really, really need to th sit down and work out and not just do sort of uh, by the seat of your pants without a plan. But if that is something you want to do, there are certain goals that I feel like are attainable and I feel like if you do it in a smart way, the risk is rather low and uh, it can be a lot of fun for the rest of us. So, And for you in general, it's got to be fun to make yo-yos. Like, come on, that's got to be the coolest thing ever. But, uh, that's gonna do it for me today guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe uh, Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think Too many yo-yos not enough yo-yos Never enough yo-yos Who knows anyway? Thanks for watching guys. Cheers to you. I'll see you next time